Hi everybody. So for this week's P5 JS STEM, uh, I'm actually going to do a little challenge to myself. Um, so I don't know if you've noticed in Google, they've been running sort of these throwback Google doodles. And a couple days ago, one of them was a theremin. So uh, I'm going to type in the theremin Google doodle there at autocompletes because I've been searching. So it's about Clara Rockmore. So uh, this is back on March 9th, but there is a Google Doodle that was made. So she uh, made music from air. She was a theremin player as well. And there's this Google Doodle, uh, pretty intricate, but uh, it basically we have this ball here. We move it around and it changes to different pitches. We move it up, it gets louder. We move it down, it gets quieter, okay? So, um, this sort of idea is something we did a similar project when we made the mouse theremin, but I'm going to try and replicate this a little bit more. So we have this sort of white glowing ball. We have this, well, so this is like a lesson, but I'm not going to add that. So sort of move the ball around. So you can play with that, however, but we have these different squares that play different notes. And then we have some text. We have a lighting up of the bar when we get to that. So I'm going to try and recreate all of that in a P5JS sketch, okay? Um, now this is, I'm gonna say in honor of this website, uh, YouTube channel called The Coding Train, uh, which has a lot of great tutorials on P5JS if you're interested in going beyond what I do here. But he does a lot of these things called coding challenges. It's basically trying to recreate tons of different things okay which you'll think so all these different coding challenges here he's remade the snake game his name's dan schiffman he teaches at nyu the snake game flappy bird so this is sort of my uh own coding challenge where i'm going to try and make this theremin okay so this will probably be a few steps but it does use basically everything we've covered in the uh last few weeks with these stem lessons we're just going to put it all together and make an actual uh replication of this google doodle okay so the first thing i need to make is an ellipse all right and i want that ellipse to follow the mouse so i need to give it an x position to mouse x and a y position to mouse y i'm going to say maybe like 40 here and i'm just going to run it every so often to make sure okay so there i have it so I'm already off to a good start, okay? Um, so the next thing I'm gonna do is sort of make it have that glowing sort of thing. So this ball is kind of glowing as we go. I might redo this too. So I need to create that sort of glowing outline for the ball that's following around here, okay? So that I'm gonna do with a stroke. So first I'm gonna make sure the fill of this, I'm gonna make it about 240 for my mouse, okay? And then I'm gonna need to have a stroke, which is the outline color, okay? And I'm gonna all make that a little brighter, but I'm also gonna give it what's called alpha, which is gonna make it a bit more transparent, because if we refer back to sort of this glowing ball here, we'll see, the, see how the circle is very dark, but the outline itself is a bit more translucent there, okay? So that is something with alpha. So if I'm just gonna use grayscale values, if I add one more, that alpha will add a level of transparency to it. And I can do it to this ball here and we'll see. So you see how you can not really see the, the circle as well, the ellipse. I could change this to 100. And now you'll see it's a little more. We covered this in another lesson as well, right? But uh, I'm not gonna have that for that, just the stroke, okay? Then I need a stroke weight, and that is the size of the outline. And that is the thing that I'm going to change, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a variable uh, called SW for stroke weight. And to start, I'm gonna make it equal one. Okay, so SW one, all right? But I need it to change as I go. Um, I need it to sort of get bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller, all right? So the way to do that, uh, and this is sort of similar to this concept of the bouncing ball. So I have this sketch here, which is to make sort of a ball bounce across the screen and go in one direction. And then when it hits a surface or meets a condition, it changes direction. So this is gonna be built on the same sort of idea where you have sort of these two variables. You have X, the location, and then you have this 
other one which you are sort of adding to that other variable and lo and behold there is a coding train video about how to make the bouncing ball if you want to check that out as well okay so what I need to do is I'm gonna make another variable and call it glow and make that equal to one okay so what I need to do here is I need to create a conditional so if open close Really brackets. Now this conditional is not gonna, is gonna be compound, but it's not gonna be like the and where two conditions need to be met. This one I'm gonna use a different syntax for or, which is if this is true or if this other condition is true, right? So there's a slight variation on what we have done here, okay? Um, and actually before I do that, what I need to do is I'm gonna have the stroke weight always adding this glow variable, okay? So this is sort of like going, uh, just adding one to this, to the stroke weight each time, and it'll get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But if I want it to get to a certain point, and then if it gets to that point, it's gonna stop and actually subtract and go less and less and less, all right? So there I need to make uh, these parameters of if SW, which is my stroke weight, if that becomes greater than, let's say, 20, okay? Now, I'm gonna use two goalposts here. These are the straight lines that are right under the lead button. Okay, so, or, uh, that is what these two things mean. So inside a conditional statement, I can say if this condition, and then I add this, or I can make another one. So if FW is less than one, all right? So this is if the this value gets too high, if it gets to 20, or if it gets too low, if it gets to one, then I'm gonna have this happen. So I'm just gonna take glow, and I'm gonna make it equal to negative glow, all right? So this will ensure that no matter what direction it's going, if it gets to this cutoff point or this cutoff point, it'll basically reverse by becoming the negative version of itself, all right? So let's see if this does what we want it to do. Okay, and there you can see, I'm maybe gonna make this background a little darker so we can see it better. All right, so there you have it. So uh, I have my circle, this little glowing background going on. Um, so that is basically happening because uh, if SW is equal to one, and then I'm just adding one and adding one, but once it gets to 20, it turns one for glow into negative one, and then when you add negative one to a number, it's gonna get less and less and less. So that's how that effect is working there, okay? so. I have my little glowing orb here, so my next step is going to be to add the bars. And I'm gonna sort of cut this up into parts just to make it move a little quicker, all right? So in the next one, we're gonna add the bars inside where we're gonna have those notes play.